So it's a brand new week, it's time for a brand new game. This is the Oregon Trail card game from Pressman. Let's open this up. Now, if you're a fan of Oregon Trail from your childhood, <laughs> a friend of mine gave me this game. <laughs> she thought that was funny. Um, we'll put that there. And then we've got your cards. So we've got trail cards, and then we've got start cards, calamity cards. Okay, a little marker and a die. We've also got supply cards. Don't check these are all trail cards yet. All supply cards. When playing this game, you're going to take your teammates of players and you're going to put all six of them. You can play up to six players, two to four or six. So they have actually rules for two to four card plays um, and then five players, six players. Um, different how many cards you get. Then you put them on the name of the board and you play through the game. It's pretty straightforward and simple. You have a start card of Independence, Missouri, and then Willamette Valley is your win. You're gonna put those on the table about three feet away from each other as best you can, to be honest. So like, that's fine. But the main important thing is the way the game plays. Um, it doesn't really matter how far away the cards are. Every player is going to be dealt five trail cards, and the remaining cards are set aside as a trail deck. We'll get to that in a second. These are cards that you're going to be using to build your trail. Now, what you do normally is you play and the rolls, roads have to connect while the cards work. So if that doesn't work, you can't play it. You'd have to play a card where it actually connects. So for instance, I'd have to play this one here, which is uh, roll an even number to ford the river, roll one and die by drowning. So it didn't die, but we didn't fjord the river. So you, keep roll, so you have to keep rolling until you fjord the river. There you go, and now you've gone to the river. Because you could still constantly drown, and that would kill you, the player who played the card. Which would suck. Uh, the next player would then have to build off of that trail. Keeping in mind that you don't want to have to take calamities but you have to build your card. So press space bar to continue to draw a calamity card. Broken axle. You have broken an axle. Roll a four, five, or six to repair. Now roll a one, two, or three, and they one spare card cards must be used to repair the broken axle. One on a play without repair, and everyone in your party has died. So unfortunately, I rolled a one, two, or three, so we need to spare parts to fix it. So somebody at the table is going to have to have um, a spare part to be able to fix it or else the thing's broken. If the thing is broken, then we can't move forward. At the start of the game with two to four players, which we'll say we have, everyone is given five supply cards. Medicine, medicine clothes and oxen. So my player wouldn't have it. On the next turn, the next player would hit play spare parts to solve the problem. Once that's resolved, goes to the Calamity discard pile. Play continues, the next player would play this trail. And then from that point, they'd have to draw their own Calamity card. Broken wheel. It's pretty much the same thing as Broken Axle. Requires a roll. Low roll. You must use a broken part to repair the wheel. Spare part. Whew. So next turn. Another Calamity. You're going to get so many Calamities in this game. Typhoid. 
you have typhoid. One clean water and one mescar can cure you. One round of play without a cure and you have died of toy typhoid. That's brutal. On someone's turn, they can either play a uh, supply card or they can play a route card. They can't do both, they can only do one. So basically you're doing that on your turn. So for instance, clean water from the other player, then another player might play down medicine and now you're saved. That's going to affect the person that has, that played that calamity on their turn. Um, once you get to the five point, uh, oh, there's five cards on the table. You're gonna take that trail and collapse it on itself. And then you keep playing. You keep playing until you've created 10 stacks of those five cards. Once you've done that, you've actually reached Willamette Valley. Um, it's, it's a long game, and the whole time we're going through it, it wants to kill you. I mean, it's just nonstop. It's just nonstop trying to fjord wivers. Roll an odd number and lose one supply card. It's... It's brutal. The game is specifically, specifically brutal. Um, just nonstop, just pain. But that's that's the point. Oregon Trail was never easy. Oregon Trail was always difficult. Anyone that thought it was easy is got a bad memory of the events. <laughs> the fun part about it is, is that you do, of course, you have trail cards, you have supply cards that you can purchase. Once you've um, dealt out the supply cards to the players, uh, a shopkeeper is picked. They're going to basically be the, usually the youngest, and you're going to separate like food, items, things like that, stuff people can basically purchase when they go to the store. If they ever make it to a town before they die. When your character dies, the first one that dies, they take over the duties of shopkeeper to basically reach to the players when they reach town. Um, additionally, people will die, and so that's why the really cool board here swaps and becomes headstones. So once you've removed yourself from the board when you've died, you get to write your little epitaph on your uh, gravestone, which is nice. <laughs> the game's prepared for you to die. Um, you do not get to draw cards back up. The only way to get supply cards back is to arrive into a town. Uh, when they get more trail cards is that once you have run out of trail cards or you can't play a trail card for whatever reason because it doesn't match the actual path, then uh, you get to draw a trail card from the top of the deck and replenish your hand that way. But you don't normally get more trail cards otherwise. Uh, all in all, it's an incredibly difficult game, uh, but it is a very, very fun and accurate game. Accurate historically to how dangerous and treacherous the journey was and accurate to the video game with how incredibly frustrating it was. Well, hopefully you guys like this one and you're likely to pick it up for yourself and we'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.